So there are several um, updates about CAR-Ts that are already approved well, worldwide being presented here at ASH. So specifically updates from studies looking at bringing CAR T cells further forward in the treatment pathway. So not only studies looking at um, using CAR T for patients with relapsed refractory myeloma, but also for patients at earlier lines of therapy. So for example, CARMA2, which is looking at patients who relapse early um, after their initial uh, line of therapy. Um, and it's really interesting looking at this data, kind of trying to bring CAR T cells further forward in the treatment pathway for myeloma in the hope that they will be kind of more effective at that line um, of therapy. Maybe patients' immune system will uh, contribute to making the CAR T cells work better at that point. So there's increasing data to help us understand some of the side effects associated with CAR-T. So for example, there's some data being presented here at ASH looking at the um, degree of cytopenia, so that means low blood counts after um, CAR-T cell therapy. So particularly thinking about low white blood cell counts and neutropenia after CAR-Ts have been delivered. Um, and we can see from this data that um, there is a, a proportion of patients, I think around a quarter to a third of patients, who have um, a suppressed white cell count level uh, for at, at around three months or four months after their CAR-Ts have been delivered. And so that's something we need to think about when we're um, discussing with patients about the risk of infections after CAR-T and maybe thinking about how we could improve on that going forwards, whether there's anything that we could do to intervene to improve that, uh, that status for patients to try and help build up those uh, blood count levels to help patients fight infection. So allogeneic CAR-T is when we take T cells not from the patient themselves, but from somebody else. So when we're generally talking about CAR-Ts so far, we're talking about taking T cells from um, the patient and engineering those T cells to recognize the myeloma cell and then giving back the T cells to the patient. But that obviously, that process takes a while. So you, the T cells need to be engineered and grown in the laboratory before they can be um, given back to the patient. Allergenic CAR-Ts are when we take T-cells from a, another donor, a different person, and generate CAR-Ts in that way. And the benefit is that you don't then need that long time period to try and grow the patient's own T-cells. Um, they can be off the shelf, they can be readily available at the time when the patient might need treatment. And so, yeah, we're starting to see um, some of the data coming through from the allergenic CAR-T trials. They've started a little bit after some of the other CAR-T trials, so it's still kind of relatively early data in comparison, but it looks very promising and obviously it has this advantage, advantage of not having to wait for the manufacturing process for patients. So I think access to CAR-T treatments is very different in different countries around Europe. So. Um, some of the challenges are around the cost of this treatment, so um, the manufacturing process takes quite a long time and quite a lot of, um, is quite costly to do that for each individual patient. Um, and they also, the CAR-Ts need to be delivered in specialist centres that have experience of harvesting um, the cells from patients and also um, delivering the CAR-Ts back to patients and helping to manage some of the side effects that can occur after the CAR-T cells have been delivered. So I think those are the two things for me really, the cost implications and trying to address that side of things and then building up experience in different centres to try and enable the delivery of CAR-T um, cells back to patients slightly closer to, to their home or in, in the, the right country for them. So I think both CAR-T and other immunotherapeutic approaches are already starting to change the myeloma treatment landscape um, in clinical trials. We're seeing lots of data coming through about both of these different immunotherapeutic approaches um, and incorporating them at different lines of therapy and in different combinations with other treatments. Um, and so I think, you know, we're starting to see that change already. And so, yes, I think over the coming years, we'll start to see that even more.